Hello there guys, it's me and Stable Voltage. Welcome back to Feed the Beast Infinity. There has been another update. I'm not really sure what difference it's made, but we've gone up from version 1.4.1 to 1.5.1, which is the current version we are on now. Uh, what have I done since the last video? Not an awful lot. Um, I've been up top above the tower and collected an awful uh, lot of wood from chopping down some trees been replanting as i go and i've needed to get a lot of wood and there is a reason for that which will become clear shortly uh, built this other single chest here because i was getting a lot of spill over from the uh, stuff that we did when we came back from uh, the little mining trip the other day you'll also notice that i've got this random wooden fluid pipe in my uh, inventory and the reason for that was uh, I was trying to sort out the issue with the uh, liquid transposer by basically uh, just rerouting the pipe slightly in the hope that I could drain the water out of it. Because what I remembered is I've got the um, magma crucible is set up to pour stuff into the tanks and the liquid transposer is set up to take stuff out of the tanks, which is the problem I was having. So I've just taken this uh, wooden pipe off the bottom here so that we can try and get the water to go back down this way into the tank. It is working, uh, but because we're relying on gravity, it does take some time. So we'll I'll sort that out in, uh, in my own time, really, as it were. So we can leave that. So the plan for today is to try and build a big reactor. Now, I've never built a big reactor before. Mike assures me it's fairly easy, so if this all goes wrong, we know who to blame. Uh, but that's what we're going to do. So they seem relatively simple to build. It's a multi-block build, and it can be built in different sizes. The smallest one being 3x3x3, three by three by three, which is the one that I'm going to build, because apparently that doesn't need cooling, which just makes it more simplistic. And you can expand it later on and make it bigger and more complex with more power output. Now, I don't know whether or not these things actually can explode, but either way, I'm going to build it outside, because, you know... Who wants a nuclear reactor in their house, right? I don't want my nuts to glow in the dark. So it's going to stay outside and we'll bring some cables in. I might build like a little hut around it or something. But what do you need in order to build one of these reactors? Well, you need a lot of uh, yellorium ingots. Yellorium ingots are really, really easy to make. You just basically take um, yellorium ore and throw that yellorium ore in... Um, well, what I do is I take the yellorium ore and put it into a macerator to get crushed yellorium ore. And then we can put that in a furnace and that gives us the ingots. So doing it that way, it means that we get um, double the yield. Now, we also need a lot of graphite bars. Now, graphite bars, there's a couple of different ways to make them. The easiest way that I found to do it was uh, just charcoal. I mean, literally, if you take, um, if you take uh, wood and put a piece of wood in a furnace, you get a piece of charcoal. If you put that piece of charcoal back through the furnace, you get a graphite bar. It's that straightforward. So that is what I uh, decided to do. I'm going to make the rest of this into graphite because I'm not sure how much of it we are going to need. So there's a couple of other things you'll need as well, like redstone, a bit of redstone and a diamond. So uh, let's get started because I've got quite a few of the materials in my inventory. One thing that I am short of that we're definitely going to need is iron. So there's a lot of iron in this build. Uh, I do have a couple of stacks of iron here, so I think that's probably uh, enough we are ready to go. And the smeltery has been busy. I have been making, as you can see, I've been casting some uh, some more iron blocks here anyway, so we do have quite a bit left over. And if you actually have a look in the smeltery, uh, there's still a little bit of iron. We've still got another 34 ingots in there, and I think I've still got another stack of ore upstairs. So we're not doing terrible on the iron front. So, let's get started. There are a couple of things that we need to build. So, mostly we'll be building reactor casings. Now, reactor casings make up the construction blocks of the reactor itself. So, we'll need 21 of those for construction. But Mike says in total we'll need 34 because some of the other blocks that we need to build require the reactor casing as a base component. We're going to need one yellowium fuel rod, which is the block that goes in the middle of the reactor. We're going to need the reactor controller, which is the interface for the reactor that also stores all the information. There's the reactor control rod, which goes above the yellowium fuel rods, and that basically tells the um, system where the yellowium fuel rods are. Uh, we will need a power tap, which is basically the connection where we connect our cables to to get power from it. 
We'll need an access port, which is the block that allows us to put stuff in and take stuff out of it. Uh, apparently, we won't need a coolant port because we're on the 3x3x3 doesn't need coolant. And then there's things like rednet ports and computer ports if we want to control it externally. We could also go ahead and build reactor glass as well. Uh, reactor glass allows us to have one side that is clear so that we can see into it. I might do that, actually, just for um, just for fun just so that we can actually see through one side, because one side won't have anything else on it. So let's go and do the basics. We're going to start off by building ourselves these reactor casings, of which we are going to need 34. And um, the recipe is quite expensive on graphite bars. I've just realized that I've made uh, far more graphite bars than I needed to. I'm still going to go and throw that charcoal back in anyway to make more, because you never know when we're going to need them. Because uh, I hadn't realized that you actually get f um, four... Where are we? I hadn't realized that you actually get four casings from one recipe. So you can do this with uranium ingots or yellowium ingots. Either way is easy enough. Basically what you need to do is um, iron ingots in the corners, yellowium ingots in the middle, and then graphite goes around the edges. And that will give you your reactor casings. There you go. We've got a full stack of reactor casings. We didn't need that many, but we've got them. So that is fantastic. So uh, let's go ahead and make the other parts. The next thing we're going to need is the reactor controller. Now that's made with a diamond and a piece of redstone and some reactor casings. I don't think I've got a diamond up here, actually. got some redstone. I'll bring some more redstone up with me because we've, we've got absolutely... Well, when I say stacks of it, literally, we have stacks of it. So we've got stacks of redstone. So there's some redstone, and we are going to need... I think we just need the one diamond, so that's not too bad. Just for the controller. Which is fair enough, because you expect some of these recipes to need at least something a little bit more complex. So basically, we're going to build this, which is a case of having the yellowium ingots here. It does say um, uranium, but you can have either or. Uh, one redstone. I know it seems like I bought a lot of redstone up, but redstone is used in other parts of the recipe as well. Uh, we're going to need that diamond, and then we're going to need four of our casings there. There we go. That gives us, our, as my mouse has decided, it doesn't want to go left and right anymore. Uh, that gives us our reactor controller. The next thing that we want to build is the, uh, well, let's grab the yellowium fuel rod. This one seems uh, fairly straightforward. So what we want to do is, I've lost it already, just go and add that to the table. So we put in the iron ingots, and then we'll have a graphite bar top and bottom, and a yellowium ingot in the middle. There we go, we've now got our yellowium fuel rods it's gone to night time i'm just going to go and um, sleep that off just to keep the solar panels working it's very noisy in this room i apologize for that i'm constantly feeding cobblestone into this uh, recycler just to try and get it all used up and uh, we're getting quite a lot of scrap actually if we go and look in the chest here you can see just how much scrap i've got most of this is from cobblestone so it's going quite well so what do we need next we've got our controller we need the rod um is it the rod casing control rod so again that is relatively simple it's going to need one piece of redstone in the middle it needs a yellowium ingot at the bottom there three graphite and three of these um, casings that gives us the control rod next we are going to need the power tap now the power tap just takes four casings and four redstones i should have um where are we power tap Clicky clicky just makes it easier because the thing is in the two seconds it takes me to click off that and come back to the crafting table I've forgotten what I'm building anyway um, So let's go ahead and do that that gives us the power tap and then finally we just need the access port uh, Access port requires a chest and a piston um, Do we have the wood and cobble in here? Yes, we do Which is fantastic Cobble 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 Iron and redstone. Always build those the wrong way around. There we go. We have a piston. Uh, I do have a spare chest, actually, because when I built that chest to put down here with the extra junk in, I actually built two. I was going to make it a double chest, but I didn't really want to sort of leave a, a gap in the corner. So I decided just to put a single chest down. And there we go. We have a spare chest. So that's quite handy. So let's go over here. So now then, what are we building? I've forgotten already. We've got the piston. We've got a chest. We want to build ourselves the, um, the access port. So the access port is the piston at the bottom, the chest in the middle, and then four more casings. Chest's looking a little bit weird on the thing there, but there we go. We have the port. And... Um, 
have a lot more stuff than I need now. So, what are we going to do? Oh, we also need to make, of course, I said I was going to make one reactor glass. So, that's just two pieces of glass and... Um, Two pieces of glass and one casing. Even I should be able to remember that recipe. Great, so we have a reactor glass. So what am I going to do with the rest of this stuff? Because I've got quite a lot of it. I'm going to take those graphite bars out of there. I am going to um, make the yellowium ingots because they are used as the fuel. I think we'll put the rest of the graphite in here for now. Um, what I probably will do as well... Which seems to make the most sense. I probably should have done that before. Uh, wood, 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 wood. Yeah, we do have some in there. I'm going to go ahead here and just... Uh, if we sorted this chest out, it wouldn't take as much room. I'm going to go ahead and just take a chest with me. Because then we can put that outside and use that to put all of the, uh, uh, the fuel in, basically. So we're going to go right up to the roof. And out through the top. Getting stuck as we go. So as you can see, well you probably can't, let's turn the jetpack on. I chopped down a lot of these big trees here to get the wood to make the graphite. Uh, I have been replanting as I went along. So you can see there are a few saplings and things around. Hopefully they will regrow. Uh, and I leveled off a little bit of area over here. This is where I've decided I'm going to go and build the reactor. I can always um, extend this platform out later on. But more importantly, it means we can build outside and we can um, just channel everything in we can just use power cables and pa power cable everything and in fact i'm just going to go ahead and take out a little bit of this um dirt here because i'd like to make it a little bit uh, wider so we'll just go ahead set the luggage on fire a little bit because it's an idiot and it gets in the way oops that's not a block that i wanted to take out but we can sort that out shortly so there we go, that's not too bad. We could probably, he's getting in the way again. Very annoying sometimes. He's great to have around for the most part, but there are other times when he's, it's just a complete pain and I question his value, but probably shouldn't. There we go, it's not, let's get rid of that because it just looks a bit, a bit stupid. I like to, I don't like having things overhang like that. That's not too bad, is it? So we've got some dirt blocks. We'll just go ahead and uh, dirt block in there and we'll just go and fill in that hole there we go okay so we've got some space to build our reactor so let's get started we're going to need our reactor casing so the first thing we want to do is we want to build a three by three which will be the base for the reactor now all of the rea uh, reactor control blocks have to be on a face they can't be on a corner and they can't be on an edge so obviously the bottom row is just going to be completely um be reactor casings because the only thing here that couldn't or doesn't need to be a reactor casing, is the middle block. But if the middle block isn't reactor casing, we can't get to it anyway because it's on the ground. So the next thing we want to do is we want to start taking our special blocks. First of all, we are going to need the controller. And I think I'm going to put the controller on this side so that it faces the front. Now, it's given me the reactor control rod, which I don't really want at the moment. What I do want is the fuel rod because the fuel rod has to go in the middle so there is the uh, the fuel rod there so also what we're going to need is the power tap now i'm going to put the power tap on this side because that way we can run a cable out and sort of through the dirt here into the uh, into the tower and we also need the uh What's this thing called? I've forgotten. The access port. The access port's going to go on this side. And then we are going to need... Well, we don't need... We could just basically make the rest of this, which is what we should do now. We should make the rest of this with the casing. As you can see, if I actually click now, um, it can eject fuel and it can eject waste and it can inlet fuel and it can inlet waste so we can do it manually but this is basically if we want to pump stuff in automatically so um yellow yellowium goes in and this cyanite or whatever it is comes out so what we're going to do is fill in the rest of the corners with the reactor casings now i should also do that on the back here but what we can do is we've made this reactor glass uh, and you can use reactor glass instead of reactor casings but by putting the reactor glass here we're going to be able to see into the reactor itself uh finally what we need to do and let's just jump up here i know i could have just jet packed up but you know, it's easier doing it this way uh is we need to get uh, that's might as well just jetpacked anyway. There we go. Right, we're on top of the reactor. So, using a jetpack around a re nuclear reactor, not a good idea, by the way. So, we are going to need the control rod, and that goes in the middle. So, we put that on top of the yellowium fuel rods, and then we build the reactor casings. 
around the rest of it. And that, I have to shift click there because it's the uh, it's a block that I'm accessing. And as you can see, the texture has changed because we now have a working reactor. If we click on it, we can actually see some information about it. So we can see it's offline, isn't doing anything at the moment. No idea what half of this stuff means. The core temperature. So temperature inside the reactor core. Let's just type in something that doesn't exist just so we clear this up. So the uh, temperature inside the reactor core, high temperatures increase uh, fuel burn up. Okay, so we don't we want to, it to stay as cool as possible. This is the energy output. The reactor is passively cooled and generates energy directly from the heat of its core. Okay, uh, this is the fuel burn up rate. The rate at which fuel is fissioned into waste in the core. And this is the fuel reactivity. How heavily irradiated the core is. Higher levels of radiation reduce fuel burn-up. And of course, it's offline. Auto-eject waste. Waste in the core will be ejected as soon as possible. Do not auto-eject waste. Waste must be manually ejected. Ejection must be done from this screen or via RedNet, Redstone, or computer port signals. And we can activate the reactor. We can turn it online, but it's got no fuel in there, so it's not going to do anything anyway. So let's deactivate the reactor. We'll leave it off. Uh, residual heat will still generate power and consume coolant until the reactor cools. So what have we got here? This is our core fuel status, how much fuel it has in it. This is our casing heat. The heat of the reactor's casing high heat raises energy output and coolant conversion. This is the core heat. So that's the casing heat. That's the core heat. The heat of the reactor's fuel, high heat raises fuel usage. And the core heat is transferred to the casing. So the casing actually mitigates the heat. And then this is the energy buffer, which is basically how much energy the reactor can hold. So let us go ahead and um, put in an ingot or two. Not just, well, I suppose we could put the whole stack in, technically. So basically, it is full of fuel. Now, the reactor's not on at the moment. So let's just go ahead and turn it on. So as you can see, the reactor starts to um, work very, very quickly. The reactor is actually running. Um, I'm actually liking this status indicator. It almost resembles the um, actual status of the reactor. It's not perfectly accurate, but it's quite close. If we go ahead and have a look around the back, we can actually see into the reactor, and we can see the yellowium. So there we go. We now actually have a fully working big reactor, which is quite easy to build, relatively cheap. Of course, it does require a diamond. I'm going to put it offline for the time being, just because at the moment um, uh, I haven't got it connected to anything. So I'll do that on the next video. Um, and what I will do is sort this area out here, and we'll basically build a little outbuilding. I don't know whether I want to build it out of marble or out of wood, but it'll just be a separate building. Uh, we can make reactors bigger in the future, and that may be something that we do, but because they're relatively cheap to build, we may just build a second reactor. If you want a bigger one, we might just keep this small one around just to power um, things like, um, you know, some of the stuff in the house. I mean, we could use one of these to power the quarry as well, because the good thing with the reactors is the reactors actually use its, uh, they output RF. So reactors output the power that the forestry machines use, the build craft machines. Um, obviously, a lot of my stuff is industrial craft, which runs from um, EU, but there are ways of converting it. Um, now, may, most of the reason why I wanted some extra power is for applied energistics. Now, I don't know which power type AE takes or whether it can run off either, but uh, big reactors are apparently a very, very efficient way of generating power, so that's why we're going with that. Got a lot more stuff in here, mainly stone and stuff. I'm going to take at least some of this with me back to the house so I can dump it in the... Uh, dump it into the, well, some of it's going to go into the recycler, and then some of it will just go into the barrel. This um, this particular mine is very much close towards the end of its life cycle now. It's getting very close to the bottom, and I must remember, once it hits bedrock, I do need to go down there with the uh, the thorm, thormy thingy. The thormy thingy. I'm just, from now on, I'm just going to call it the thormy thingy. Uh, we're going to have to go down there at some point with the thormy thingy, and... Uh, click on bedrock because apparently you get quite a lot of stuff from that uh, we've already got some zombies about which is hardly surprising um, we can uh, go and teach them a bloody valuable lesson and that is um, keep off my lawn uh, there's a skeleton up here with an enchanted bow uh, he got wrecked um, there's a creeper up there and do you know what I'm just going to get out of here 
And then I'm going to go down here and have something equipped in my hand other than the bow and arrow this time. Because last time I went down there and... It's just the luggage falling. Uh, last time I went down there and tried to shut the hatch behind me, I accidentally right-clicked with the bow, shot an arrow straight up in the air, and it came straight back down and hit me in the face. Uh, uh, did obviously didn't do any damage because of the armour, but still it was quite embarrassing. So um, that's all of that done. We've got the... Well, we need to get rid of all this junk, actually. Let's go ahead and... Let, right. First things first, it's daylight, I did sleep, couldn't remember if I had. That's how bad my memory is. It's like I literally just slept there a few seconds ago and couldn't remember whether or not I'd done it. Um, so let's go ahead and dump the rest of that stone in there. And in fact, we can probably take a, a, a few stacks out. Because I think this thing's actually finished now. Uh, so let's go ahead and just pop those into that. That, that dirt can go in as well because I'm not really bothered. Um, got a few more things that I need to sort out, but let's go ahead and put the rest of these reactor casings in here. Uh, we've got plenty of stuff spare. I think I'll just put the charcoal in there as charcoal. I will, um, I will make up the rest of this stuff, and what I didn't do actually is I didn't go and put the chest outside, but we can do that, so uh, that's what I will do uh, in a moment. Let's just go and get rid of all the rest of the junk. So what don't we need here? We don't need the zombie brains. Seeds. I've got so much stuff that's scattered into several chests, and if I actually sorted these chests out, it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be all that bad. It's just because I've kind of put stuff all over the place. But there we go. We have our first big reactor, and I'm quite pleased with the result. It was easier, cheaper, and quicker to build than I expected. Uh, I made way more graphite. I made way more graphite than I actually needed to, but um, that's fine. So we've got our working reactor here. And like I said, over the coming videos, so let's just do this. The plan is just pop a chest down and then we've got somewhere we can put the fuel rods and stuff. So over the coming videos, what we will actually do is we will get this wired up to our um, existing power infrastructure inside. What we'll probably do in that case is completely get rid of the uh, peat-fired engines that we have. And it's going to make the peat bog or the peat farm a little bit redundant, but then we can upgrade that and use that for something else. A little bit of lag there. Um, so, yeah, what we will do is we will... Uh, we'll, obviously, we're going to have to come down a little bit. Uh, but we will basically bring it through the wall on this side, wherever it's going to come through. And we will we'll plumb it into this. We'll get rid of these engines. They'll be a little bit redundant. We'll save them, because we might be able to repurpose them somewhere else. Now, obviously, using the uh, cobblestone kinesis pipe isn't very good, because we are going to be travelling quite a long distance. And the cobblestone kinesis pipe is the equivalent of the build craft sort of uh, copper insulated cable in the way that... Uh, after just a few blocks, it actually starts losing power, so it's not very efficient. Um, so we will have to put some more efficient, ca uh, more efficient power cables in, but we can certainly do that without too much of a hassle. So uh, there we go. We have our first big reactor, which is a our first step towards sustainable power and another step towards getting applied energistics up and running, which is another big step towards getting my um, storage room sorted. That being said, I am getting quite sick of this room now, and even before I get AE up and running, because I think there is still quite a bit of a process with A&E, uh, what I might do is... Um, build some iron chests because we've got a lot of iron i might just build some iron chests put all of these chests flat against the wall and manually sort them out put some signposts above them just so that i know what's in what and um you know just try and sort them out a little bit so that we don't have so much random stuff all in different chests i mean i can go around and look for iron and you know i've got iron in this chest here i've got iron in the in a chest upstairs and I've probably got iron in another chest over here. It's, it's just a complete big mess. Um, I did manage to, I went out and got some more obsidian from the place where we got the last lot of obsidian from and I only needed one piece and I managed to make the last remaining uh, open blocks tank that was needed to fill in the XP tank. I did empty this out one day just to see how much was in it. I think there was about 70 levels worth of XP, something like that. It takes quite a, you can actually take the uh, XP out just by right clicking on the tank because you can see at the bottom the screen my level is going up so i'm already like you know level 31 32 33 every time you click uh you go up a level which is quite fast but then when you want to drain that and you go and stand on the xp drain as you can see it actually drains quite slowly because instead of it giving you draining a level at a time it actually drains a certain amount of xp at a time and of course leveling in minecraft um the XP required increases exponentially. So as you can see, as I'm draining XP, the levels are starting to go down faster and faster and faster because the lower levels are worth less XP. So 
There we go. It's all drains back into the tank now. But yeah, I think there's about 70 levels in there altogether, which ain't bad. Don't know what we're going to use that for yet. Uh, maybe we'll get something like a um, uh, an enchanting table or an automated um, anvil or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll consider that in the future. But that's all for today. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you are still enjoying Feed the Beast Infinity. And I'll see you on the next video. So until then, goodbye for now.